All right, here it is. The project is complete. I was actually debating whether or not I was gonna make this video. I wasn't quite sure if there was enough content to justify making another video on the NES PC, but I got so many comments on what direction I should take the space, I felt like I should make one more for you guys just showing you the final product. The overwhelming majority of you said you wanted to see the RGB, so I gave it the true gamer look. One thing I really like about this option is that if I ever decide I don't like the look of it, I can always go back, paint over the strip right here, and go with the black option or match the NES colors. So I kind of have my options open with this. Also, the cheapo LED strip that I used in this doesn't let me use any custom colors, so I'm not able to use the color that was in the video. But we can just color grade it and pretend. I added an angled display port cable that wraps through to the back, so that way I can keep the cartridge slot closed if I'm not doing anything too demanding on this. And then if I end up doing something like gaming or programming something that requires a lot of processing power, just flip it open and we're good to go. I've got it running Windows for gaming and game development, and then I'm dual booting Linux for machine learning and software development. Honestly, I'm happy with it. I have a computer here with decent specs on it that's smaller than a PS4 Pro. There's no PC case on the market this small that will fit a GPU like this. And for good reason. The thermals are awful here. In gaming, I'm consistently reaching 80 degrees. If I underclock it, then I can avoid this, but obviously I sacrifice some performance. Now, I thought about showing some benchmarks, calling it good, but that doesn't really give the full picture here. So instead, I want to break it down in terms of what I can get from just a singular game. If I run a newer AAA title, something like Assassin's Creed, I can set it to very high settings at 1440p, and I'll get around 45 to 50 FPS, sometimes dipping into the upper 30s in busier scenes. I personally like a higher frame rate than that though, so I'd rather set it to high settings and get the solid 60 frames per second, or if I really wanted to max things out, I could set it to 1080p and then obviously I could go to top settings on it. Unfortunately, that performance is with the GPU consistently sitting at mid to upper 80s. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. So I've been underclocking by around 350 megahertz and seeing temperatures pretty stable in the mid 70s. This does lower the frame rate by about 10 frames per second pretty consistently. So the bottleneck in this build is actually temperature, but there's no surprise there. In my opinion, 1080p is no way for you to treat your beautiful eyes. So I say just move the settings to high at 1440p and turn off anti-aliasing and you've got a pretty solid 60 frames per second on something like this. And your friends will never know. Technically, I could always open this up and swap out whatever I need to, but realistically, everything is crammed in there so tight. If I open this back up, I'm afraid I'm not gonna be able to fit it all back together without breaking something. So realistically, this computer's fate has been sealed. So in summary, I got the form factor of a console and also the upgradability of it too. Would I recommend doing this? No. Absolutely not. I've run into so many road bumps and issues trying to pull this off. I mean, it looks pretty, right? But I just see the compromises I've made. The cutting, the melting, the soldering. But I think it turned out all right. Definitely not at all what I initially intended it to look like. In fact, it's completely the opposite. But I got a PC with a solid performance and a really small footprint. For reference, the smallest full feature PC case that you can buy right now is about twice as big as what I have right now, and probably half the temperature. Now I'd like to shift gears and talk about the channel a little bit. I've got some other projects that I've been working on that I plan on releasing in the coming weeks, and I'd love to hear what you would like to see. I don't want this channel to just become custom PC builds, and while I've already started planning what I'm gonna do for the next one, in the meantime, I've got some AI projects, 
and a game I'm working on and some other software projects. So let me know what sounds fun to you. Would you like to see more hardware projects where I'm hacking apart electronics to come up with something new or some kind of creative software? Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. Make sure to leave a like. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching.